If you like top five tanks, please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Jesse Alexander, host of the Great War Channel and the upcoming documentary 16 Days in Berlin. The Tank Museum has asked me to choose my top five tanks, and I chose them based on their personal meaning to me. So let's get started. This is my number five tank, the British Mark V. Now I chose this tank for a couple of different reasons. One of them is that over at the Great War Channel, we've been doing a lot of work about the Russian Civil War. Now this tank was actually designed to break the trench deadlock in the Western Front in France in 1918, but the British ended up shipping about a hundred of them to Russia in order to support the whites against the Bolsheviks. And I think that's kind of a pretty cool uh, destiny for a tank like this that was designed for something completely different. Now the other reason I chose this tank is a very personal one. This tank entered service in the summer of 1918 and exactly at that moment in time my great-grandfather made it to the front lines in France. Now he didn't leave any diaries or any letters behind uh, before he was wounded and lost an arm in that conflict and invalided back home to Canada. But when I see a Mark V like this one, it's kind of like I can use my imagination to try to fill those gaps. What was he seeing? Did he see a Mark V tank? What did he think of it if he did? So to me, the Mark V is indirectly part of my own family history and helps me to understand what my great-grandfather must have experienced. And that's why the Mark V is my number five tank. This is my number four tank, and in fact, it's not a tank at all. It's a self-propelled gun. This is the Su-76, one of the Red Army's most widely produced self-propelled guns of the Second World War. Now, I chose this as my number four tank because we've been working very hard on the upcoming documentary 16 Days in Berlin, about the Battle of Berlin. And self-propelled guns like this one played a key role smashing block for block through Berlin on the way to capturing the city. Now, for me, this represents part of the difficulty of understanding the Soviet experience in the Second World War. This is an open-top vehicle, and the crew would have fought in winter in conditions that for us, in Western countries, are difficult to imagine. That's why the Su-76 is my number four tank. And this is my number three tank, the Char B1 of France. Now, to me, this tank represents the tragedy of France's Pyrrhic victory in World War I. It served in World War II in 1940, but it was a tank designed for a different war. Now, we often say in the English-speaking world that the British soldiers of World War I were lions led by donkeys. Well, I think that equally applies to the Char B1 and its crews, because in 1940, the crews of tanks like these fought as well as they could. But it was the tool that was the problem and their leadership was simply not up to the task. And that's why the Char B1 is my number three tank. This is my number two tank. It's a T-26 Soviet unit from the interwar years. But there were 10,000 of these still in service when the Germans invaded in 1941. Now this model in particular was captured by the Finns and put into service for them. But the vast majority of these tanks served in combat in 1941, and to me, this is the meaning of this T-26 tank. We don't appreciate the level of suffering that the Red Army soldiers went through in defending their country in the initial German invasion. The fact that 10,000 were in service meant that it's a tank that we should know a little bit more about and appreciate a lot more. And that's why this is my number two tank. This is my number one tank. And again, technically, it's not a tank. This is a universal carrier. And it's important to me because my grandfather drove one for five years in World War II. He served in the Canadian Army in Northwest Europe, and it's his stories about his war experiences driving this carrier with the machine gun team that inspired me to study history and ended up with me working as the host of the Great War Channel on YouTube. He was wounded while driving one of these and had two vehicles shot out from under him. And these are the stories that I will take with me forever, even though he's not here anymore today. So that is why this is my very personal top tank. 
So I hope you enjoyed my top five tanks. And if you did, please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. And if you can, support them on Patreon.